Hello everybody and welcome back. This is the second part of Appen and the gentleman said I went back to Appen with the dogs and I heard my first loud wood knock today as another dog came running into the area up its lead in the distance. As the loose dog got near to us and the area we were in I heard a really loud clack as loud as can be. As I said before I rotate the dog's run. So I went back to that area on the next run with the next dog and I took the camera from the car with me. I took some pictures and the pictures that you can see are about 500 metres from the car park. And that's what I call the safe part of the woods as I've become to think of it like that. This is not the area where the odd dogs behave oddly and the tree with the pointless looking structure. But another 500 metres on from there. And most people usually turn around at that point and head back to the car. But I like to push on a bit. And the woods always feel different at this point. Almost with that feeling of being watched. So firstly, the small structure that has no clear purpose that you talked about in the last video. Then the howls and the calls all seem to be adding up. My dog always stops next to that structure. As there's a lot of thick, reedy gra grass in that area and they like to chew it. So I stand there and I watch them and, I, you know, I see what they're doing. And they're looking up into the bushes and their attention is elsewhere. So as you can see in the picture, the rocks that are laid out with the A have been carried and arranged with little sticks. And the A is poking out in the front of them. And it's berries that are laid all around them. And I've checked everywhere else near the running water for something similar, but I can't find anything. Another of the photographs is of the branch and they're taken from about 30 feet away and it didn't photograph very well. But what I saw was a branch which had clearly been hung within another tree. Um, and this is kind of like scraped, as again, all the mossy scrapes off it and there's scraped earth beneath on the bank. And it does look like there's a footmark or a footprint. I've taken a photograph of that, but it could be human. I photograph them as you just don't know. So in the last two days of walking, a large A-frame has appeared and the A-frame shape is laid out on the floor and it's made from trees that were carried there and there's no root holes, and no drag marks either. One tree has deep scratches in it. Then next to the A-frame shape is a stump with a deep scratch in that and chips as if it's been ripped apart. And the first area that I mentioned where the structure is, that's been smashed to pieces and cleaned up like a tornado has been through there and this is the place where the dogs always behave oddly but um that little shelter that i talk about so i'm unsure what to make of all this howls the dogs acting strange um things being built seem within days um of me last being in there so i don't and i know it's not weather I know it's not human as I'm in there most days and I see ground disturbance as people walked in and out. The shelters are not something I've seen before and the howl still has me a bit spooked. And I think the best thing I can do is keep visiting and taking note of any changes. And I'll keep an eye on my dogs and how their behaviour changes over the next few weeks. And if I have any more howls or anything like that, I'll let you know. And I have to be honest, I'm stumped. There's some really interesting behaviour going on, let's be honest with you. He's hearing howls and he's took the time to go online and see if he can match them. And that's what we should be doing. And he's also done the same with the bushcraft shelters. And they don't look up to standard. They're very poorly built, whoever's built them. Um, and it could be wood school, but I'm sure that he would notice that in the area. So I really need your advice. Um, and the problem we have with structures and shelters is that many of them resemble bushcraft, don't they? which is, in a way, these do. But they're very poor bushcraft, in my opinion. They wouldn't stand up much to the weather, and they would seem to get knocked over really easily. They look like kind of blinds that you'd see in the Amazon and the tribes have made. But I am no expert on these subjects, although people think I am. It doesn't seem like it was built to shelter for me, but I could very well be wrong. So what I need to do is get the bushcrafters involved and ask them if they know this design, is it something that you do, of, you know, or the Bigfoot is getting involved. Are you finding things like this in your area? So I do see cut wood within that structure and that often puts me off. But as somebody explained to me the other day, surely to conserve noise and effort, if there was cut wood around, you would use it. And that made perfect sense to me. And I thought, yeah, well, that's true. That would happen. 
So you'd use what was available, I suppose. Um, and I know the internet is swamped with misinformation when it comes to bushcraft and Bigfoot shelters. So for now, we're in really early stages of learning here in the UK. So we note them and try and match them to known bushcraft, or we ask for advice as we've done today. And I'm sure out there people will be able to help us. Shelters aside, I am very interested in the dog's behaviour and the howls that were heard. Dogs can be key if you watch their behaviour and on occasion some dogs will refuse to enter an area and that gets me interested. Um, they'll even alert you to danger as most dog owners will testify to. And your dog's letting you go out in front um, if it's the opposite of what they would normally do is very telling. Um, I've had it where the dogs have gone in front of me and I know other people have had the same thing where the dog's always most put itself between whatever it is interested in and the owner um but if you're out this weekend keep an eye on your dogs if you see any structures and you're not sure take the photograph anyway and send them in to us we'll have a look at them and if we can work out what they are well that's great we can cross them off and move on to something else and if we can't then we'll ask around and see if anybody else can um but that's got me interested, and a lot of you will be going out for the first time this weekend, with it being the Easter weekend, uh, with your families and everything. So let's keep an eye out and see if you notice anything strange in your neck of the woods, and, and let us know, and we'll see if we can put this um, stick leans and stick leans to bed once and for all. I don't think we ever will, but we shall see. So until next time, and thank you very much, for gentlemen, for allowing me to share his story, and I will definitely bring you some updates from him. Uh, good night.